Hello and welcome back to Red Hat Summit from sunny, or I think it's sunny, Denver, <laughs> where we're also having Ansible Fest, again, second year that they're cohabitating and really bringing things together. Obviously, AI is one of the big discussion points, but how do you do it in an open way? I'm joined by Paul Gillen, and we have Rebecca Knight here, and right now, to just, you know, again, go headlong into AI some more, we're joined by Joe Fernandez, who's the Vice President and GM of Gen AI Foundation Model Platforms. Very long title, but really important and key <laughs> to what we're talking about today, to say the least. And then we have Mo Duffy, who's the Senior Software Engineering Manager at Red Hat, over that stuff, so making it real, which is fantastic. And welcome back, both of you, uh, CUBE alumni, so glad to have you both back on. Uh, Thank you. you. Know, and yeah. Talking about this. So, Let's kind of jump into this. I, I think, again, there's been so many great pieces of new content and new open source that's come out. I think one of the ones that, I, ha I got a little bit of an update before we got here. Somebody whispered in my ear about Instruct Lab, but it seems like a good place for people to start, especially when you're looking at it. And we were talking with Ashesh and uh, Matt about this earlier, about, hey, how do you take people on their journey through AI. And to me, it seems like you guys have really laid out a really good, I would say, way to think about AI and how you get started, how you do it cost effectively, and how you move up that stack to production. How, how are you seeing that? Uh, so, well, we've seen like the biggest change that's happened in the AI ecosystem since last year's summit has been just this explosion of open models, open source, um, you know, Hugging Face, Facebook Llama, Mistral, all these model options. And, you know, it's really fantastic. You know, as, as always, open source is driving that innovation. Uh, but, you know, what we don't see is the ability to jointly collaborate on model development, right? So everybody's able to access these models, but then everybody takes their own instance of those models, uh, makes copies of them, tunes them for their own purpose. So how can we bring community-based approach to development um, and that's what we're trying to do with the Instruct Lab project, and I think Mo can talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, so the Instruct Lab project, basically we're using a typical upstream open source pro process to enable anybody in the community to contribute knowledge and skills to get built into the model. So it's not just like one company with vast resources and exotic hardware nobody can buy. Please, I want some, but I can't get it. Um, it's, it's a community of people getting together, um, diverse perspectives all feeding right into the model. Yeah. What form will this take? Will, is this entirely virtual or will there be Instruct Lab physical events around the world? Yeah, so, so we have an, an Instruct Lab, uh, obviously, a community site uh, at, at, on GitHub. That's where uh, the community can come together. They can contribute to models. They can also contribute to the source code. We obviously have an Instruct Lab lounge here uh, at Summit, so we have a lot of customers stopping by, getting their hands on the, on the project, on the software, and help, helping us out. And then, yeah, I, I think, Coming out of Summit, we'll be spreading spreading the word, you know, broadly, you know, uh, different uh, geographies, different uh, visiting customers, as well as uh, community events, um, and that's something that we're really looking forward to. And, and it was also in, in parallel, some of the other announcements that were made were around some of the granite stuff that was also being done, and some of the things, and that kind of ties into Instruct Lab as well, right? Yeah. So we have the granite base models that you can take with uh, Instruct Lab, and they're Apache licensed. So when you're playing with them and you're building on top of them, you can. We, we basically take on a regular cadence the contributions from the community, and then we make an Instruct Lab tuned model with the community contributions. So basically, together as a group of people working together at open source, we're creating new version of the model every time we do that build. Yeah, and this really highlights our partnership with IBM Research, right? So IBM announced the Granite models a year ago at uh, IBM Think. Uh, they're part of the Watson X portfolio, but now with this new open model strategy, they've begun open sourcing some of those uh, models. So the, the Granite language model that we're using in the Instruct Lab community, the Granite code, uh, code models that were just released this week, and we're really excited to see that. Also, the Instruct Lab project came out of, uh, sorry, the, the lab methodology that drives the Instruct Lab project also came out of IBM Research. So it's been a really great partnership between IBM Research and Red Hat to get us to today. So how should people think about Granite vis-a-vis -vis all of the other open LLM models that are out there? Yeah, so, so 
the good thing is there's not going to be one model to rule them all, right? And that that's, you know, and again, a year ago we were only talking about a couple of giant, you know, proprietary vendors, whether it was, you know, OpenAI or Google or what have you. Today you're seeing like an explosion of, of open alternatives, and I think Granite fits into that. The other, the other thing that's interesting is, and this is both Granite and Instruct Lab, tuning the model to a use case, right? So um, a GPT-4 model is a trillion parameter model, right? It takes a lot of compute resources to run that kind of model. But if you're using AI in an enterprise use case to solve a specific problem, you can do that with smaller, more efficient models that are tuned to your specific use case. So we, you know, we feel Granite is a great model option, especially now open source Granite. Combine that with Instruct Lab where you can bring knowledge and skills. And again, this is, we have two sides to it. Community contributions to a model that we're building collectively with publicly accessible skills and knowledge. But then the Instruct Lab tools that we'd sell commercially, customers can deploy in their own environment and then use it to drive you know, their proprietary skills and knowledge data into their own uh, private versions of those models. So it, you know, both sides at play here. And the thing about it is you're experimenting with AI, you're not really sure what you're doing yet. You don't want to be doing that in the public cloud with your own custom private data. And the uh, Instruct Lab approach lets you get started on a laptop. The data does not have to leave your laptop. You can build up your skills over time and gain confidence so that you, you're basically able to work with your own data without pushing it out to the public. Yeah, and, and if, if people missed it during the demo that you were part of earlier in the keynote, was fantastic. I, I believe you asked for a more powerful laptop or something to that, <laughs> which, which I look at because I, I was talking to Matt about this, and I'm, or Shesh, I think it was, uh, even before we were on it. I'm like, okay, now I, I'm, I'm looking at it because I have a little project, side project that I wanted to go play around with. And I go, this gives me a way that I can go and use Podman, a, you know, Podman AI Lab and use Instruct Lab and then start to play across that. And I thought that's what I thought was really good about the keynote and when Chris brought you all on stage to do this, hey, here's how you go and do, are you, are you seeing that organizations are looking for that guidance? Because we, we see it that 80% are still in the you know, prove it stage with yeah. their use cases. Yeah, absolutely, just like any technology evolution, right? And Red Hat's seen a few of them, right? You know, it was the same way with Linux 20 plus years ago, bringing Linux and open source into the enterprise. 10 years ago it was containers, Kubernetes. Kubernetes just turned 10 years old and we yeah. brought that in the enterprise with OpenShift. Now it's the same point in AI, right? And people are still sort of, on those two prior evolutions, we still talk to customers that are just getting started with Kubernetes, containers, OpenShift. AI is going to have you know, a long tail like that, but there's no doubt like, you know, this is going to be a transformational technology that's going to impact all enterprises across all verticals, but they need a way to get started and also a way to assess how, what, what can this do for their business, for their specific application use cases. And so yeah, if you can start on a laptop, graduate to a server, and then eventually make your way into production, which would happen on a cluster, right? You know, those are sort of the, the three kind of footprints that we talked to in that demo this morning. There's no question the industry conversation has all shifted to AI over the last year, but things like hybrid cloud and multi-cloud and, and containerization and migration, modernization, these things haven't gone away. Right. Are your customers still asking you about these things or are they, are they making that shift as well? Yeah, 100%, right? And, and it takes different forms. So first of all, like just on the OpenShift, we had a, we had a tremendous uh, quarter in Q1. Uh, still a lot of customers coming in, moving to cloud native and containerized applications. But now, oh by the way, OpenShift can also run virtual machines, right? And there's a lot of people interested in alternatives for uh, virtualization and so forth. We can, with OpenShift now, bring both containers and VMs to a cloud native environment. Then you get to AI, that's, that's sort of the, the next technology. It's also a, a, a workload that lives in a hybrid environment. Like, where does AI need to run? From an inferencing perspective, AI needs to go where the data lives. The data lives everywhere. It's not just in your data center, it's not just in one cloud, it's out at the edge, it's on devices, it's on servers. So we think AI is the killer workload for the hybrid cloud, and so it really ties in well to our hybrid cloud strategy, our hybrid platform uh, with, with OpenShift and RHEL and so forth, and so we're really excited about that. Um, and then also on the training side, as Mo said, you may not be comfortable training models in the public cloud or you know, depending on the nature of the data and so forth, 
Some of it you may do in public cloud services. We have a lot of great partnerships with AWS, Azure, Google, IBM, but we also can bring that on premise on your own hardware and so forth in your own environment. So. Yeah, I, I, th I think that's to me one of the keys is that you, you're meeting the customer where they want to be and, and bringing this technology in various different forms for that matter to the point where I heard all the announcements before even the Instruct Lab stuff came up and I, my understanding is literally that was nothing two months ago and all of that shifted as it started to percolate and really ramp up into this. So tell us about that, how you got that from where it was to where it is today and just. Honestly, it was like, it's been 10 weeks and what happened is our colleagues at IBM Research put out a paper on the lab methodology that drives the entire thing. And it's this process of, you take a little bit of data, right, not a lot, it's very expensive to create training data and tuning data for a model. So you take a little bit of data, you don't need to be a data scientist, you don't need to be a developer, whatever your expertise is. You draft up that data, and then it goes through the synthetic data generation process because you need a lot of data to fine tune a model to, to move it because they're, they're large language models. So you use that technique to amplify the effect of the bit of data that you put together and then we have a training methodology that uses fine tuning to basically bake it into the model. And what comes out at the end is your data in the model. Yeah. You mentioned synthetic data. There are some downsides to synthetic data, of course. It can be duplicative and, and ultimately misleading. What is IBM, what have you done working work with IBM to improve the quality of synthetic data? Yeah, so, so synthetic data generation is not unique to this, to this use case, right? That's a very common practice in, in AI development. Uh, what's unique about Instruct Lab is it combines synthetic data generation with a taxonomy-based approach for specifying skills and knowledge, right? So that's the part that makes it accessible to the people that have those skills, that have that knowledge, uh, and then basically leverages uh, that taxonomy to do synthetic data generation. Then there's also a validation step, right? So we just don't assume that all the data that's generated are samples that are good samples, right? So there's a, a validation step where they'll sort through uh, the data set that's been generated and eliminate uh, poor or invalid samples, and then you use that reduced subset to actually train the model, right? So, so there's checks built in at the synthetic data gen process, uh, uh, and then after you train it, we also run the model through benchmarks to like say, did the performance actually improve? Can it do the things that I was trying to get it to do, right? So there's, there's checks uh, even in the post, post process and as well. The thing about the taxonomy approach is, you know, there's the approach of just throw it all in the blender and blend it up and then see what comes out, is it any good, and we'll evaluate it. The taxonomy approach gives you a very systematic way to identify gaps in the data that you're putting into the model, and that's where we're looking, at least in the community project, to see, well, where can we fill in the gaps to improve the model's performance? So it gives you like a nice way to see where we need people to make contributions. Yeah, uh, we, we'd be kind of remiss if we didn't hit on one of the other big announcements, which was RHEL AI, and yeah. how that plays a role, because I, I think, again, Instruct Lab, Podman, do it on your laptop, Right. moving up, okay, so now maybe I want to move into RHEL AI, and then where you used to be, and you, what you, role you used to have, is OpenShift AI, right, and things exactly. of that nature when you get into, to help us understand where sure. RHEL AI really fits in here. So, so RHEL AI is our new foundation model platform for bringing these technologies together. So the Open Granite models, the Instruct Lab model alignment tools, but where is that all going to run? It's going to run on Linux, right? So we package it as a bootable uh, RHEL image using this new RHEL image mode technology that was also announced here at Summit. Uh, we integrate acceleration for popular hardware because Linux needs to run on NVIDIA hardware or AMD hardware or Intel hardware, and you saw NVIDIA and Intel at the keynote as well, right? We can package that into the image and give people a great experience on the hardware of their choice to work with the models that they want to work with. And then those servers could be, again, in your data center, they could be servers out in the public cloud, et cetera. Uh, but uh, fundamentally, that's the transition from I'm doing work on my laptop to now I'm in an enterprise grade server that has you know, uh, NVIDIA GPUs or Intel GPUs and so forth. And then to your point, once you prove out on the server, <laughs> well then to go production, you probably want to run in a clustered environment because now you need to bring in more machines to do bigger training runs to inference at scale and so forth. What does that remind you of? 
That's how containers work. Right. When, you, when you start working with containers, you don't start on Kubernetes, you start on Linux to validate that containers are a fit for your application use case. Then when you're comfortable with that, you bring that into a Kubernetes environment to run it at scale. So that's why we say the relationship of RHEL AI to OpenShift AI is very similar to the relationship of RHEL to OpenShift. Yeah, it definitely makes a lot of sense, and I, I think I, I really appreciate you both coming on board here because I, I think uh, the Mo and Joe show was awesome. <laughs> I love that. I, I think again, <laughs> you know, it's it's fantastic to start to break down the announcements and understand. So, thank you for coming on board and. That's great. Much appreciated. All right, thanks for having us again. And thank you, Paul, and thank you for watching The Cube, the leader in high tech analysis and news. Stay tuned for more from Red Hat Summit and Ansible Fest as we come back to you in a short second. <laughs>